the local people, what did they do to this possessed man? They put him in shackles because he was, you know, um, so, so much a danger. And what did the demons allow him to do? To break the shackles. And uh, in, in essence, uh, it's a symbol of freedom, but I'm going to propose that was a counterfeit freedom because what, was it really freedom when he breaks the shackles? No. Uh, uh, what, it, uh, what these evil demons did to them was to drive them away from community. So that was not a true freedom. You know, what things in our lives, and so as we apply this, uh, to our lives today, we can ask the question, what thing in our lives look liberating to us on the surface but ultimately drive us to broken relations and isolation and to feeling alone? Might this be an example? We are the most sexually liberated culture in the world. Is that a true liberation or is that a false liberation? I would say false. People today are probably the more most alone even though we have this freedom of, of relationships as our culture defines it today. And so just as this man had a false uh, sense of liberation uh, by breaking the shackles um, it, was, it was not a true um, of sense of freedom, but rather uh, he was driven away uh, uh, from the relationships that he really desired and, and craved. And, and I think in our culture today, too, we also have that sense of false liberation. It's not really true liberation, but rather we become uh, more isolated and, and more distant to the people in our lives as, we, as, as this type of, of lifestyle will create more um, uh, uh, broken relationships and, and isolation. And so just an example uh, of maybe that that happens today. What about another example? Let's, what about fathers, okay? Today is Father's Day. Um, it's a day that we, um, we honor and, and celebrate our dads for, for what they have done. So can we pose this question uh, in a way um, that might impact us as fathers. And again, the question we're looking at is what things in, in our world today look liberating on the surface but ultimately drive us to broken relationships and isolation. So can we look at that question um, from the aspect of being a father? And I realize this is a little bit of a stretch, but I had to bring Father's Day into this somehow today. So this was my opportunity. Well, what about lack of disciplining your children? You know, I'm a grandparent now, and as you know, as grandparents, it is so fun, and it is so liberating to be able to spoil the grandkids and to not feel guilty about it. But what if we do that as fathers? Is that really liberating? No, no, it can uh, come back to bite you later. Um, as, uh, as uh, the kids grow up and they become spoiled, that can uh, turn them into rebellion and can also uh, result in broken relationships and uh, isolation later in their life. And so I guess we could call that a false liberation too. But the good news is Jesus, by contrast, offers a genuine liberation. Because as we look at this story, the one who uh, was possessed is now a disciple. And the possibility of a relationship which had been destroyed by evil is now restored. Salvation is holistic. Bringing life to body, mind, and spirit, and to relationships. So this is a story not of, of physical healing, and there are other stories right around this where, where he does have some physical healing, but it's a spiritual healing. In fact, the uh, words heal and save, uh, as translated in Scripture, often come from the same Greek word. 
And so Jesus' healing results in the restoration of this individual's identity. Now, he was asked for his name, and what did the man respond? Well, in essence, he says, I have none. I have no name. Uh, more accurately, he said, my name is Legion. But that wasn't anything about him. That was really more about the demons that were living within him. It, it, legion means a multitude. Um, and a legion in the army meant literally you know, thousands. And, um, and so he was oppressed by too many demons to count, and he had lost himself in the chattering of these voices that he heard. And he ceased, he ceased of being a self, an, an individual, and a person. And he spent his days roaming alone in the wilderness. A danger to himself as, as uh, well as others, separated from the community and, uh, and even himself. So I raise the question, how many of you are similarly overwhelmed by the voices raging from inside you and, and outside of you, denigrating your identity as children of God, as we read about today, and driving you to places of extreme loneliness or, or even despair. The healing work of Jesus can remind and restore us of our birthright as children of God. You know, it was said when Martin Luther felt oppressed by the devil that he would take courage by shouting out, I am baptized. And he grounded his confidence of salvation in God's act of drawing him into the Christian family through the water and the word at this baptismal font. It brought confidence to Martin Luther of his salvation. The names and the claims that the voices of the world may shout at us, they do not have that last word. We declare that God claims us once again. That God has restored our name and our identity that he has given to us. In preaching today, author and speaker Tony Campolo tells the following story. I was a, in a church in Oregon not too long ago, and I prayed for a man who had cancer. In the middle of the week, I got a telephone call from his wife. She said, you prayed for my husband. He had cancer. I said, had? Whoa. I thought it happened, you know. The man was healed was what he was thinking. But then she said, he died. And I felt terrible. Then she continued, she said, don't feel bad, because when he came into that church that Sunday, he was filled with anger. He knew he was going to be dead in a short period of time, and he hated God. He was 58 years old, and he wanted to see his children and grandchildren grow up. He was angry that this all-powerful God didn't take away his sickness and heal him. He would lie in bed and curse God. And the more his anger grew towards God, the more miserable he was to everyone around him. Isolation. It was an awful thing to be in his presence, after you prayed for him, though, a peace had come over him and a joy had come into him. Tony, the last three days have been the best days of our lives. We've sung, we've laughed, we've read scripture, we prayed. Oh, they have been wonderful days. And I called to thank you for laying your hands on him and praying for healing. And then she said something incredibly profound. 
She said, he wasn't cured, but he was healed. This man, filled with legions, he wanted to leave his land and to follow Jesus. But Jesus said, no. The mission of his followers is to take the healing and liberating love of God to broken and desolate regions. To those whose lives are bound by demonic forces that they cannot control and to bring healing. Healing. Maybe not curing. Curing in the here and now. We know curing will come eventually on that last day. But rather to bring healing. Healing to our relationship with God and our relationship with each other. So as we look at this in our world today, the mission of Jesus' followers is to take the healing and liberating love of God to a sex-crazed nation, fractured with broken marriages and relationships. The mission of Jesus' followers is to take healing and liberating love of God to families with out-of-control children. Let's return to the thought of that first missionary to the Gentiles. Perhaps what these people in uh, Decapolis needed was not another demonstration of Jesus' power, but the living testimony of the one who has been healed and restored. Think about it. If that man were to leave, how easy it would be for the neighbors to revert to the status quo. But with him constantly among them, renewed in mind, body, and soul, they must reckon with God's determined action for health and for life. Yes, following Jesus may mean staying where we are and bearing witness to the mighty acts of God that we have experienced firsthand in our lives. So it is my prayer that we may become excited enough about our healing to do the same. In Jesus' name, amen.